Dale Wright and welcome to another episode of Bird Matters, a video series about the world of birds and the environment we share. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the work of two groups involved in the study and conservation of two magnificent but threatened birds, the Cape Vulture and South Africa's national bird, the beautiful Blue Crane. Vultures have really faced and continue to face some serious challenges. Apart from loss of their natural habitat, there are issues of power lines, being poisoned by poachers who don't want them to give away the location of a carcass, and perhaps the biggest culprit is secondary poisoning after eating animals that have been treated with diclofenac. You may know it as Voltaren, an anti-inflammatory. Apart from learning important information about the challenges that face the Cape Vulture, you must watch this video that follows the work of Terry Volta and her organization Volpro if only for the beauty and amazing views that are recorded by cameras attached to the vultures. You know, I never realized how cute and caring vultures can be. It's nice to experience the softer side of vultures. We always associate them with dead animals and frantic feeding frenzies. I was so scared, you have no idea. Waiting there, like waiting to jump off a cliff. But it was amazing, once we took off it was totally different to what I expected. We've probably released over 250 vultures. The release to me reminds me of why we do it. To stabilize the Cape Vulture population where it no longer declines and hopefully starts increasing. Whatever we do for the Capes has a knock-on effect for all species globally. And having an influence on the survival of all vulture species, that's the main goal. Visit the Volpro website for more information about how you can help. And you can also watch the full video there. Blue cranes are South Africa's elegant and graceful national bird, evoking for many people happy memories of wild valleys and rolling farmlands. But sadly, blue cranes have been declining rapidly in recent years, and for reasons similar to the Cape Vulture, poisoning, collisions with power lines, and the loss of their breeding habitat. Grasslands have been converted to agriculture, plantations, mines, and other developments. Although cranes can feed in croplands, they are sometimes targeted by farmers and are now vulnerable to extinction. We caught up with a team of researchers who are working to understand local movements and the vulnerability of blue cranes in natural breeding habitats and adjacent croplands. Um, today we are here to, to attempt to, to catch blue cranes to fit satellite trackers onto um, and the idea with this project is to really try and understand um, how blue cranes use the landscape within the Western Cape. Um, get a glimpse into their daily lives, their, their local, very local daily movements. Um, and the aim of this is to really try and look at um, how we can then feed into to development or conservation planning projects and be able to provide um, objective scientific input in ter terms of um, how uh, blue cranes as our national bird could be impacted on by developments like wind, farm, wind energy farms um, and associated power line and energy infrastructures um, associated with, with wind energy development. We've had some very interesting large-scale movements, um, particularly a, a Western Cape bird was recited in, in Eastern Cape um, towards the Port Elizabeth area and we have had then sort of movements between the birds in the Overberg, so the area where we are right now, and into the Swartland region. How does it work? So it's just a noose line. Each noose is a Big loose nylon noose, bird walks along, puts a foot in, and the noose tightens over its foot. Mm -hmm. it's a yeah. And that's basically pegged in all around the feed trough, and they come in to feed and get their foot caught. In South Africa we've got over 80% of the biodiversity within the country actually sits within private landowners' hands. Which means that uh, within this type of area the critically endangered um, habitat and of course the critically endangered species that are reliant on that habitat um, is all uh, within the hands of the, the farmers. Um, 
So we do a lot of work with them. They are the custodians of it. So they are the ones that uh, have ensured that we still have these uh, pockets of, of vegetation, um, pockets of, of uh, ecosystems in place. And um, there's a lot of pride uh, that the farmers have for the areas. So uh, we, we share our expertise from an environmental science perspective. Uh, we work hand in hand with the farmers um, to be able to ensure that uh, their legacy will be carried on to further generations. Mm -hmm. These are just some of the highlights from this crane project. So if you find this topic interesting, click on the link at the end of this episode for the full video. And now for something completely different. Have you ever seen a Goliath heron taking on a fish this big? Well, neither had we. That's it from me for this episode. Don't forget, if you love birds as much as we do, consider becoming a member of BirdLife South Africa. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can admit that you like us on Facebook. And more importantly, get out there and connect with nature. There's no app for that.